Hello everyone, welcome back to more for the 2024 Stone Burner Open for Dune Imperium Uprising. Host and commentator at the Black Shadow. You see our coverage of the group stages of the competition. Now we're getting into more games and we'll be able to cover more of them for you guys. We'll be coming in a much greater rate of knots for both you guys on the channel and definitely for me as far as editing is concerned. Uh, we're going to look at Group A today. Here's a look at uh, the standings here. Today's going to be featuring Grizzlepuff Mitchell. Albuff and Double D Kim. Things are fairly well poised actually in this group. A freeway tie on points currently between Grizzle, Evan, and Mitchell on a nine from two matches played, and Slow only a point behind on the eight are four previous winners of the group. Um, however, at the bottom end of the table, there is definitely a bit of a gap uh, between them and then Ting, Bok, Albuff, and Kim. So a lot of pressure on those two, especially to try and get a result here. A win will get them right back into contention, but uh, otherwise they'll be leaving it all to the last match to try and find a victory to qualify. A reminder, of course, that the top two from the group will qualify directly into the tournament's quarterfinals after four matches played by everyone, and third, fourth, and fifth will have to go through the additional wildcard round. Well, as will be on Grizzle, who is definitely a noted regular of the XMO scene. There's had a decent tournament so far, winning with Gurney Halleck second place as well with Fader Alpha. Uh, this is the one and only time that them and Mitchell will actually be playing in this group stages. So I think there'll be a bit of pressure between the two of them as well. And they will know if one of them can win this match, they'll have a foot in the door for the quarterfinals. But Uprising could be a... A funny old game as we're realizing the course of this tournament. You know, as I say, we're still in kind of this wild west sort of world where a lot of folks are kind of approaching games differently with different mindsets. It's interesting to watch, definitely. It does make it a bit harder to call sometimes as well, however. Okay, so we're getting ourselves ready here. The players have started getting underway before I was ready, which is a little unfortunate, but it is what it is. Uh, anyways, uh, Double D is going to be in the first position, meaning that it was Mitchell to pick first. He has picked Air Alarm, but let's have a look at the row and text here quickly. Um, let's see what's going on. Rowan Tex, God, I see. XMO, it's ingrained in me, you know. Uh, the contracts, I should say. Uh, and two very strong ones opening up here, Arakeen and Spice for Finally, Both very desirable. Makes total sense to look to try and get Irulan. Uh, Dutiful Service has a lot of values. are two very, very juicy early contracts we're looking to get hold of and make use out of. Uh, as for the Imperium Row as well, Captured Mentat is an absolutely awesome card and one of my favorite cards in the entire game. Incredibly powerful and an amazing card for Irulan as well. Start getting that over towards uh, Imperial Privilege, and you are absolutely laughing. A lot of other strong cards as well. They're brain operative, of course, very popular. Contracts could be of interest if more decent ones come out. Spun Oak as well can be interesting. It's a bit, it's a, bit of a tricky card sometimes, uh, the fact that it has no actual places to send it, but it's still fairly solid enough, so I don't hate Irulan here at all. Uh, what else we got here as well? So we are missing... Are we trying to look at who we're missing? No Lady Jessica and no Margot in this one. So, yeah, Gurney, MYD, if you're almost certainly going to see here. Probably Fade as well. Any chance for Lady Jessica? Feels a little bit risky. Um, Staban... Ooh, Staban feels really dangerous here as well. So I suspect you'll probably see all the fires, which is not a bad spot for Ear Alarm. Could kind of carve their own niche out here. So, uh, leaders will continue to be picked here. Gurney in third makes sense. I suspect we'll probably see Muad'Dib in second and Fade in first. Might be the way around. But I would expect to see those two leaders. Jessica feels a bit exotic here, to put things mildly. And Staban is, like, super dangerous. Can't really see choosing that one either. Um, and Amber hasn't proved very popular so far amongst the community as far as playing in a competitive style. So I expect we'll see Fade. Um, it'll be interesting who gets captured Mentat. If like if Irulan can get like decent in privilege access and captured Mentat, like it is incredibly powerful. Griffin as well for Irulan as well is the reveal for this is a down bump um bump. And what you can even do with Irulan is if you use it, it's amazing. But if you can hover around the two persuasion mark on the Emperor, you can actually drop down and then rebump the Emperor and get your extra intrigue again from Irulan's uh, Imperial Birthright ability. So just gobs of value for Mentat. Something I would be I would legit. Be, be considering a revealing for if I can. Anyways, we're off to the races. Uh, it is the fault to combat, so no matching, but intrigues everywhere. Uh, Fade round for doesn't draw great couple of daggers though, so he's just going to go for him kit straight away. Wadiv, oh, action access, but not much else. Uh, Gurney's pulled a pretty nice hand. He might find himself getting drawn into this, but no daggers behind it. What has Irulan got? Irulan's got five. That includes having the dagger, which is a bit awkward. 
you feel like you want you've got to get diplomacy off to either deliver supplies or, or dutiful here but i don't know the problem is is that the more this goes the harder it is to get the capture method it's such a good card for you uh, and i'd be very worried if i don't reveal early you don't get it but then you'd have to go like arakeen and even then you might pull your dagger so you might just have to give it up here perhaps um, so we'll see what happens. Anyways, uh, Wadi just fires it in the Desert Tactics. No surprise. Gurney with Ring and Seek Allies. I think Deliver Supplies looks pretty good for Gurney Hammock. I think you've got the one faction access. You can look to get Deep Desert early, maybe get some shipping done. When you're third in the row, I think Swordmaster is definitely gettable too before anyone else. He wants a piece of this combat though, but he doesn't have to get in now. He might go Arakeen or accept contract as well. Obviously, there's a lot of very strong contracts out there. So just going to go Arakeen here. Seems reasonable. So Iran's got an interesting choice now. Could also go deliver supplies. But it's a little harder to guarantee that you're going to get the Deep Desert access. He might get hindered by Gurney, and that could get a little bit tricky. Might just assembly hall to start with. It does. Just to try and get it to a direction. Secure Spy Stray comes out. It's a big card, actually. That's something you can definitely play around if you're alarm, given the state of opposition that's around her. So I think that's a pretty significant one. Trying to obviously play the Diplo and hold on to the five persuasion. Obviously, I don't think she ever goes and just reveals the priority contracts. That seems a little wild, but who knows? Fade Arakeens. Pauses Diplo. He did not want to do that. Doesn't even put in any more troops. A bit feels a bit rough. YD will just take the Solari. It's kind of weird. Like You kind of want to put in your third troop. I guess Fade also did it to block the Arakeen trip for Gurney Howl, which makes sense. I think YD is going to put in a third troop here because he's got no daggers, but it's a bit awkward. You fear Gurney might just go in anyways, but there's no more deployment spots really available here. But I think he'll put in the third one. He kind of wants to win this. Gurney, I suspect, will just go Imperial Basin. Oh, he's got his Seek Allies. He might not even get involved. All the faction spots are still there. Dutiful's there. You could go Dutiful and get both get uh, both the city contracts, but just goes to deliver. And Irulan will tick up the Spice Refinery contract, surely. And she'll hope that she's going to get to five, but it's not likely. Not likely at all. Fade with five cards, but only three persuasion and a couple of daggers. Feels not great, but he gets he's going to get the very important Benny Operative card. He's going to want to get espionage ASAP in this one. Ooh, Sadakar Soldier comes off. That's actually one of Irulan's better cards here. Fantastic for her ring. Wadi well, with just four. So, limited options. He might just pick up, like, Spy Network just simply to put a spy on Hagger Basin or something. I could definitely see that happening. I think that's very likely to happen here. I don't think he's going to pick much else. Capture Mintat's out of his price range, and the tread is a bit awkward for him to use, so he does go for that. Leadership's the next card here. Very, very strong. I wonder if Gurney Halleck might go for that. It also has Fremen Access, which is not the worst. Its reveal is also very potent as well. Uh, two Persuasion, plus a Dagger, and a dang for each one, which will help Gurney get hold of his, um, his Always Smiling ability much more consistently. He might even go for an early prepare the way. I think that might be a touch premature. I don't know if I'd want to pick that straight up, but so be it. Gurney with five. Leadership looks very tempting. There's a couple of decent cards out there. Irulan praying that he goes leadership. Absolutely praying that Gurney Halleck takes leadership. I think he's meant to take leadership, but he might go capture and does. Disappointing for Irulan, so... Not sure what she's going to pick here. She might go leadership herself just for faction access, but obviously she was desperately looking for captured men out there. That is very sad. That was a, a really, really kind of teased out there. Actually, hard take Sardaukar Soldier. Is Irulan prepping up for Desert Tactics round two just to trash it? Maybe. Spy Master's the next card. It's a pretty good card, actually. I quite like Spy Master. But takes Tread. So he's going to be looking to go down a Prepare the Way route. Couple of pretty decent cards left out there, though. So, so Mwadi takes it, picks up uh, Fine Weakness, very strong. And Fade Round for picks up a Reach Agreement, which is actually not that bad here. We'll move on. Second up is Tessa Loyalty. It is a fop to matching. 
don't see how Wadib's ever going to win this, though. He'd have to use his spy um, most likely to win this, but he might do it. He has to get a spy, though, is the problem. Interesting. But there's going to be a die for this. People want the money, desperately. It should be most interesting. So, off to Gurney. Gurney did pick up the extra water here. I mean, deliver supplies deep desert just seems a fairly... Like, it can't be a bad route. But it's a bit tricky, though, because the problem is there's money, there's money in the fight. He could desert tactics himself and take this down. There is an Emperor bump on for the prize and spies. It's a pretty good first award. It's always a bit tricky when this comes up here. He might desert tactics and fire in, but no. Just going to take the spies here. Interesting. Is he going early espionage? Could well be. Irulan, yep, as mentioned, is desert tacticking, so she's going to get rid of the... It was noted here. Looks like she was prepping up for that round too, so the soldier will go. Uh, she'll pick up an intrigue for... Tr Ooh, no. Ooh, I think I would have trashed the Sardaukar soldier there. Get that intrigue. You know, make it really hard for people to play back at you. She's looking to try and trash it for her ring later on so she can also pick up the two spice, which is obviously what she's doing. So kind of trying to go for it all here. I think I would have just taken the intrigue and just called it a day. But I guess trashing the dagger is it's never, it's not bad either. Faye's just going to hit secrets here. Start putting, uh, probably put down the Bene Gesserit spy, I would imagine. Picks up show and profits. Hmm... Bit of a tricky one. I mean, it's good to get it early. Wow. Looks like Fade Ralph is going for the double draw here. He's going to go for priority contracts. He's going to commit himself here to this route, I think. It's going to be some work. Siege for Fumwadi, of course. Troop, troops going in. Figures he might as well. He only has a Diplo, but it's Deliver Supplies and... Dutiful that's there. Could also go Arakeen. He does have the contract. It'd give him more troops and a spy. And he would probably win the fight and get another spy down, which looks pretty decent. Doesn't feel great to give up the Diplo, though. Espionage is there. Fade, you thought, would have blocked the spy a lot of the time, but didn't. That might scare him into going to Espionage here. If he pulls his dagger off the espionage draw, he'd get an extra persuasion anyways, so he's guaranteed to be plus one. He's at two. It'd make him three, which I guess doesn't really matter too much. Depends how much he wants to win this. I think he's talking himself into Arakeen here. I think he's talking himself into Arakeen. He knows that it's very hard for him to get second place by going... I mean, it's a bit tricky. He could get second place off refinery. He might just go refinery instead and just put the two troops in, transfer a, salt, a spice over, and um, think, well, whatever happens, I either win or I get Swordmaster straight away. That's exactly what he does decide to do. Gives up the Diplo. Which leaves Irulan in a bit of a weird spot. Desert Tactics, put it in. Now what do you do? Hard to know what strength Gurney's at here. He's probably got a dagger lying about. So you could go Arakeen and win it. And I think that's what she's going to do, and that is what she's going to do. Figures it's too important. Hoping to pull the side of oh. <laughs> How do you pull the side of soldier when that's six? That's dirty. That is absolutely dirty. What an insane draw that is. So it gets the Intrigue and the Two Spice for trashing a card that she's already previously acquired. Picks up Call of Arms, which is useful. Absolute gin. This is all going in. What an insane result that was. Wow. Cannot believe she's pulled that. That is, that is absolute craziness. So Fade's going to call the Spy here and try and double draw to get to six for fur priority contracts. He does, but it pulls his Diplo, which is not what he wanted to see, but at least he's going to get there. So 
Fade is clearly going to commit himself to this route. Does he pay to trash the dagger? Looks like he's going to. Not too worried about the spies. I think that's actually reasonable. I would like to get the dagger out here. I think this is, I think this is better. I quite like it. So he's just got to get contracts he thinks he can cash here. So it's got to be Arakeen for the city. Espionage comes out next. Uh, remember, of course, Reach Agreement also gives him a contract here. So he does think he can make this work and get this, this point here. Bit of a side game fade to playing. Anyways, Wandi with a couple of daggers has got 1, 2, 4, 5, 6, 7 persuasion. So he's going to take leadership, no doubt. Maker Keeper comes up, which I think he's just going to go for here. He was after the, after the Imperial Spy Master, the Access. Does decide to go with it. Hmm, I don't know. The problem is the Spy Master doesn't synergize the best with Spy Network. Anyways, Gurney with three. Other Benedict Operative turns up here. I imagine he takes out a lot. Space Time Folding is an option, maybe. I think a lot of people just take the Benny Operative here. Keep is also out there, but he's got no progress of either faction. I don't think that's the right call here. Does go for it. Here comes Beast Spoils. This is the North Carolina promo card from the Invitational event. I have my signed copy. Irulan also with free. So you can use Call to Arms just to pick up an extra garrison troop here. Space Time Folding could take. Got a deck of 10. Space Time and make a keeper. Pick up a couple of troops. I think that sounds pretty good. The spoils wouldn't be bad here, truthfully, because she would. Inf she's going to get this, so she would have sword and fodder, so she'd be able to trash and get a troop with beast spoils. It's also pretty strong. But it's going to be make a keeper. I think you should take space time folding. It's a decent access card, and you're getting the troop as well. I would definitely be taking that, and does opt to do so. Second Weirding Woman and Rebel Supply now on the row here. And Fade with six is going to take priority contracts and he's going to commit himself to contracts here. He's still got to get him fulfilled, however. But he's going to he's gonna have a pump it. So, see how much progress Fade makes in this. No comment to be played here. So, Irulan will take it down. Curious to see what she's going to spy. Does she spy the council, perhaps? Gets a second bump, so she gets an entry. Bat by Choam is found. Ooh. I think I would be spying up the council right now. But she might go Bene Gesserit for espionage stuff. Decides to do that instead, which I guess is also fine. Could just go espionage and if you don't infiltrate and just uh, put the spy up there. I think she should look to get a spy to council, though. She'd be able to get there. If she had a spy council, she could basically have guaranteed... Um, what she could even done is actually downbumped back by Choam with the Emperor to go back up later on and get another intrigue. I think I would have liked to have seen that, but she's hoping that she just gets espionage here and she'll be okay. I think back by Choam might happen anyways. But we'll see. Gurney pulls Captured Mentat. So Captured Mentat's action is to you discard a card to get an intrigue and draw a card. Very, very strong. Um, he's in no danger of losing Swordmaster here. There is the market opportunity card, but it's only two spies for five Solari. So Irulan have to have basically that and something else like that by Charm to beat him, which is incredibly unlikely. So doesn't have to capture men. Doesn't have to go there immediately. There's a load of spice Imperial Basin as well. So I like, I like Gurney going Basin, take the spice, and then go Swordmaster, and then play it from there. Discard the dagger. Looks good to me. Just limps the troop in for now. Trade dispute is the conflict here. Very juicy. Mardi definitely wants to get himself to, to Hagger Basin here. It's a huge combat here potentially for him. It's also a matching pair as well. So is anyone going to be interested in blocking him there? Does Fade Round forever talk himself into... He's got... Look at his hand actually. You know what? If Fade Round was a specific hand, I think he might actually go Hagger Basin and block here. Ilan just goes refinery. Yeah, the problem is, though, I, I kind of don't like this. I would have preferred to go espionage, because then you can put the spy up there, and then you can infiltrate with, um, like, Tread or something and, and just get your Swordmaster now. Now you're kind of putting it off unnecessarily. Let's have a different plan in mind here. So Phaedra Alpha has a decision. 
I think with his hand specifically, it's either that or you just go accept contracts and just grab a load of contracts, but then you're letting Wardeeb start worming this, and that might not be acceptable. And he does opt to make the block here. I think this is the right call. I think cutting Wardeeb out here of this conflict specifically, I think is very important. You do not want him to start sparring water. I think this is the right call. Takes a challenge contract, of course. We'll put the two troops in because of reach agreement, of course. But yeah, this puts Mardib in a bit of an awkward spot now. He hasn't got any persuasion with Benny's, so he has no drawing off of this. I suppose he'll just go accept contracts and redraw here. Finds a dagger. Hmm, what do you do here? The harvest contract looks good, but I don't think how you actually ever get this. 2, 4, 6 persuasion. He's thinking dagger would get him to 7. No big, big costers on the row, though. High Counter Benny Bump has some reasonable because of prepare. Yeah, it seems seems the better out of the two. Also keeps it away from his opposition, which could be important. Someone like Gurney with um, Captured Mentat really would like to get High Council at some point. Looks very strong. I think Gurney just has to has just got to play Captured Mentat. He's trying to look to see what happened. Remember, the discard has to happen before the draw, so whatever he discards could be redrawn. He'd get rid of the pack, right, I assume. But there's there's... There's no reason not to play Captured Mentat, I don't think, to this. Like, you know, get rid of the dagger, and you just run with whatever you you, you, you you draw. Some people don't like that. Some people like having a much more deterministic knowing what they're going to do. Some people don't like chancing it to, to, to luck like that, but I don't see what you can really do here. You could dagger it. But then, where's... Where's... Uh... Problem is, is that where's um, where's Captured Mentat going? It's going to not many places. Assembly Hall. It doesn't make a lot of sense. I I think just Captured Mentat this. I think this is overcomplicating it. Well, didn't see that coming. Was Gunny Halleck thinking maybe they could do this to like delay everyone else's sword master or something? If so, it's horribly backfired. I think what it is as well is he doesn't want to use... Um, he doesn't want to use Captured Mentat because he won't redraw it, I guess. But I, I don't know. That seems kind of wild to me. Well, here's what it is. Irulan gets Swordmaster out of nowhere. Fate just garrisons. And Wadib has... Not really anywhere to go. I guess he's off to uh, Siege. Is he going to blow the wall here? No, not yet. He sees Deep Desert and thinks he needs to make a, make efforts towards that. It's probably the right call. So Gurney uses this to shift towards and trying to get towards her hooks. The problem is, is that Wadib's on his right, and he's about to be last in turn order. Mm. Tempo-wise, this feels hideous. Grabs Rebel Supply because he's caught the special mission injury, so he's thinking he can just get in a ton of troops here. A lot of decent cards. On Swerving Lords, he has some interesting use. Obviously, does pair with Rebel Supply for the Fremen Bond. Gurney has... Yeah, he's got three more. Could also go Watermaster. And does go Watermaster. Cooperation comes off next. Irulan would be very happy to see that. I think she would just be nibbling this a lot of time. Although, again, Beast Spoils is a pretty good card for her. But I guess she's got an action, so yeah. <laughs> this has been a strange old round, isn't it? Does Irulan go Desert Tactics? No, it just garrisons the water. I think he would have been tempted to go Desert Tactics there. The idea being is that it gets you the Siege access. 
I would have been very tempted, but I think Irulan sees Deep Desert and she's more interested in getting that, get the water together to um, go Deep Desert next round, assuming she draws access. Which is likely, but not guaranteed. So Fade gets Covert Operation, which is pretty big for him, given he can obviously lift spies for battle strength later on. Wadib with five in the dagger. Wadib can win this. Fine Weakness will win him this fight. This is a bizarre conflict, this. Look at this. I think he will. The fact that um, Gurney and Irulan are both pet are both tied, and the fact that they're about to everyone's about to pass in front of him, I think Wadib's just gonna throw the two swords and think, I'm gonna actually win this. It's a matching conflict for him. I I have a feeling he will, and he could go research station contract as well. That's one he could likely get hold of. He must realize that he's not getting to Deep Desert Harvest here. Anyways, he's got five persuasions. He's looking at branching, which he does take. Branching's it, it's a card I want to like more than I do. You know, it's not a great award for getting the Benny Alliance. But access is access. Yeah, we've still got revealing guys. <laughs> Not on combat yet. Forgotten that Irulan... Yeah, so weird with the, the Swordmaster. So Irulan with three. Can't get hold of Public Spectacle. I, I think Beast Boss for me. I think she should just take... It's a it's a it's not a bad card for her. Um, and just like trashing the troops. And the free sword reveal is not the worst and does opt to do so. I think it doesn't help you get secure slices flows, but it's fine. So there's going to be passing all around here. And I think... Wadib is going to use is going to use um, fire weakness. Fade is considering that, but doesn't. He has to use it. He's got no choice. Like this is just what a crazy fight. And two swords is going to do the job here. And everyone else is going to pass. And he knows he's good. Strange conflict. This. He just uses reach agreement. He's going to retreat. He has to retreat in both. Then surely one he gets nothing. Tied third in this situation gets no rewards, so yeah. He's either got to keep them both or retreat them. And decides not to in the end, which I think he has. He's got a secure third spot here. Keeps Gurney out of it. So Wadi wins a super cheap trade dispute here. Even though he didn't get his worm and got blocked, he wins it anyways, which is kind of wild. And we're going to move on here. What a strange, strange combat that was. Irulan's strategy is absolutely reliant on her getting Deep Desert access. It is absolutely reliant. Mm, that's an attractive... Uh, that's a very attractive contract for Irulan, that. So, almost we march here. What have we got? It is not a wall conflict. It's Trome Security. Wadi will be very interested by this. Irulan pulls her access. Can I mention she didn't actually pull any, any cancel access? So if Gurney had gone Swordmaster, Irulan now would not be able to get it. Wild, isn't it? If he pulls Benny Operative, surely he's just going to go Espionage here and put some spies down. Wadi is surely just leadershipping to Hagger Basin. A lot of the time, he would think. As long as he gets any reward out of this, he'll be fine. But the problem is he has no garrison. And, you know, Gurney's got that Arakeen contract. Irulan's got a ton of spice. And she can't go shipping with it. And this is a matching conflict for her as well. So this is fraught with danger. And you know Fade's got reach agreement, so he's going to be a much more liberal about putting troops in here. So, this should be interesting. Anyways, espionage it is for Fade. Obviously, Mwadi has to go get his Swordmaster first. But interesting to see how this is going to play out. It's also matching conflict for Gurney, but he will be very wary of the fact that Irulan has got the Highliner um, Spice and that he's she's she's got position on him as well, so that makes life really awkward for Gurney. He'd have to commit like absolutely everything immediately and try and get Irulan to do something else. 
They're just deciding on his spies. Can't put it on the Benny, so I think the other factions looks good. Does he block a Pagger Basin? Eh, doesn't seem that useful for him. Might just go back to contract space again, yeah, and that's exactly what he does. So, making his intentions very clear. Swordmaster for Wadib. Gurney's got Rebel Supply and Watermaster here. But he's only got two spaces he can visit. Interesting spot. Does Gurney Halleck Watermaster Arakeen? And then potentially, if he wants to go for it, he can put a spy on Research Station, Rebel Supplier. That would give him, what, two, four, like, a lot of, a lot of garrison. Uh, research 2, Rebel 2, Arakeen 1, Arakeen Contra. So he can have like 7, 8 troops in this fight if he wants. He might also just reveal Watermaster for the two spies, which is also pretty attractive. But if he wants to go Research Station, he'd have to play it. Maybe he thinks um, between... Probably his access is very limited. And this is the complication for, for Gurney here. It's a tricky hand. Yeah, that's why he's looking at playing. If he plays Watermaster, I think he's intending to go Research Station. Otherwise, I guess you just play Ring to Arakeen. But it's very scary with, with um, Irulan with all of that spice. It's very, very scary. Looks like it's going to be Arakeen. Don't see a ton else that you would go for here. That makes a lot of sense. Maybe accept contract and not accept to to, um, to gamma support. But no, just goes Hagger Basin. So more blocking of Wadiv. You'll be very annoyed about that. Leadership's now doing nothing. Wow, Irulan just goes for Dutiful, and Gurney Halleck's going to feel very happy about this. Picks up weird in combat, which is only the plus three swords currently. But now Gurney Hallett knows he can just go for this combat and he's good. Irulan has used that, unless she's holding space time folding. That's the one scary thing, is Irulan could have space time folding in her hand. And that might scare this, you know. Could be playing Diplo early because they've got space time, they're just going to throw it all in here. And then they will inevitably go for this alliance. It's totally logical that Irulan would, uh, would do that. That's very uncomfortable for Gurney. Back to Fade. Seven Persuasion in hand. Is he that desperate for public spectacle? He also didn't take his uh, espionage contract anyways. I think Blue is quickly AFK here. So when they get back, that's how I remind people is I put something in, in I'll put like that. They notice it. So what does Fade want to do here? He's got seven persuasion. He's got his Diplo in hand. He wants to use his ring, of course. This is why it's very important for Fade to try to get to uh, free, uh, free agents uh, ASAP here. So he's got to make a decision what's more valuable to him. Got to get troops in, right? Frem kit looks pretty good. How many, choices you got? How many cards you got to draw? So, five. So, if you Diplo, you might respin one of these cards. You would respin one of these cards. I think Frem kit looks very attractive. Again, we've reached agreement. I don't think you need to go accept contract right now. It's a faction spot. It gives you hook access later on, perhaps. Bumps are good. Is a combat you want to kind of like harass and try and get yourself involved in a bit. I, f I feel like Fremkit is good. Desert Tactics. You could also Desert Tactics and trash out Recon at your hand, I guess. But that feels a bit excessive. It doesn't feel like the right move here. It's also very scary. Like both Gurney and Irulan could highline this. And that's pretty uncomfortable. So I can't see how you commit heavy in this fight. Seems kind of psychotic. Wadi has been blocked out of hooks. So it's, so he's not really ever going to get involved here. I feel like Fremkit just feels like the right move. 
But he decides he wants to use his ring here. The problem is, is the ring you're then having to trash out your hand anyways. Oh, wow. So Fade goes Arakeen for his contract and gets the water. He pulls... He pulls his contract card out, which is not what he wanted. It reveals for two spice, but he wants to be using that. He's having a trash out of his hand anyways. I I, I feel like I would have just preferred going Fremen here. I feel like if you'd gone Fremen kit and drawn the desert contract, I wouldn't have felt so bad. He's got to put in all three troops because of reach agreement. He has to set a price here. Bumps are bumps. But... Mm. I don't know. I think I think you got to be hitting that faction spot when it's there. Personally, like you can't keep giving those up. You've given up before. You can't keep doing that. These bumps are hard to come by. And there are worlds where someone who reveals and takes public spectacle away from you, and then you are in real trouble. So Mardi. Has got his he's got his diplo. I mean secrets can't be bad here. The problem is is he's got a lot of dagger strength. He's got five daggers. Um, leadership plays for free because spy um, spy network is one and imperial spy master is one and leadership gets one plus for each of the others. So he can go to desert tactics, put in a troop and get seven strength here. He would still be in the lead. And he might figure, he might go for it. The idea being that if he gets second place, he gets his water back. I can see Marty talking himself into this. Why is he his discard pile here? I think he's strongly considering Desert Tactics. And you know what? I honestly, I think that's probably not a bad move. You feel like you're probably going to get second place out of this. Oh, from kick to draw, I don't like. You want to see these cards again? Your ring's there. Leadership's there. Spymaster's there. Oh, I don't like the draw. I, f I honestly think Desert Tactics trashing like a dagger at your hand is is, is pretty it's pretty good here. He's also not taking his point, so that's going to mess up with my, uh, my scoreboard. He does just from kick it. He gets the eight persuasion. Was he trying to hit Spice Must Flow? Wow. I guess it's hard to pull the trigger there, but it would have been interesting. Anyways, here comes Gurney with Rebel Supplier. And the Arakin contract as well. The spy will just go back here for later on. How much does he put in? Does he put it all in? He has to. He feels he's got to put it all in and pray to God that Irulan doesn't highline. But I guess if he if if she highlines, you're not winning anyways. It's kind of a weird spot, isn't it? You've got no intrigue. She's got a couple. Yeah, it's a little uncomfortable here. But just puts it all in. He's going to shut his eyes and hope he's good. Irulan's unit does not have space time folding, but that's why he's putting it all in because space time folding is in Irulan's deck. And he did not have any idea if she had it or not. <laughs> Sorry. I think if it did, Irulan would possibly have, have, have pulled the trigger. But as it is, I think Irulan should reveal for public spectacle. She's got the espionage spy. She's got spice. She's got nothing with the Benny and Fremen for the make a keeper. Like, there's not much to be done here. I think revealing and taking spectacle is the right call here. That's exactly what she does here. And this is horrible news for Fader Alpha. This is terrible news for him. This this uh, this draw has been pretty disastrous. He's sitting there with five, and it's not a great row for five here. Fader Alpha in a lot of trouble right now. He's going to get his contracts, but yeah, he did not want to be revealing this for the spice here. Oh, he's got six. Oh, my apologies. I miscounted. Okay, we guess Junction Headquarters, which is it's a decent reveal. I don't think he ever gets the Alliance, but it's a, it's a solid reveal. Uh, this is this round has not 
Doesn't feel like it's gone very well for Fade. He's going to have to try and recover here. That's a Muad'Dib. He does have that third agent. Desert Tactics is still an option. You feel like you're kind of meant to get a troop in here? I don't know. The you can go. I mean, you could just go Desert Tactics here, and the idea being that he gets his water back, gets him the alliance. He's got eight persuasion. The second public spectacle has actually turned up on the road, but I don't think that's going to stop him here. I think he's just going to get Desert Tactics and go for the alliance. I think he probably should have done this the way around, but that's just me. Dune will go. Leaves him with five. Curious to see what Fade Ralph will do reach agreement. I guess Fade Ralph can't really retreat anymore because he needs second place, he feels. Gurney's going to reveal with five. Gets his spice. Surely has to take the other public spectacle. He's got one spy, but I mean, spectacle A just gets away from opposition, and B, you can just. You know, do whatever you want with it. Overthrow turns up on the row here. Big 8 Costa. No one's can get it right now, though. Why do you have to live with 5? I don't mind a bit of tribalizing in the Fremen here. You know, you've got a couple of Fremen cards. Ecological. Unswerving. Doesn't interest either of them. Wow. Not even unswerving. Would have been tempted. Fade, Fade can't use uh, Reach here. So, combat's resolved as is. Gurney takes it down. It was pricey. But he takes it down. Intrigue as well for Mwadi. Picks up Depart. It's pretty good for him. And Highlander Contract also for Gurney Hallett. That is very scary. We'll move on. Okay, next up is Protect the Sieges. Well, Paul Trades has had to wait to get his worms in, and now it is it is uh it is Well, this is a really weird one actually for Paul Trades. This is normally an amazing worm combat. The problem is is that he's already got the alliance. This also doesn't match for him. So it's kind of weird now, this. What's really great about it is usually people hang on like sort of two or three persuasion and they use this to take the alliance and get the water back. And basically water neutral, but Paul has already got the alliance. Hmm. This could be a bit weird, this. Hmm. Don't know how he's going to approach this. Uh, meanwhile, Fade Ralph, by the way, who is on here, sure he just has the sword master. Cove operation is in hand. That can get him to deliver supplies. Fade kind of wants to get people get wants, wants to get uh, wants to get troops in here, of course, because he's got reach agreement. He's he can always just be kind of liberal in combat here, but it's a again, it's a very weird spot he's in. It's almost like a bit he's playing a bit like Amber here with the the troop retreating potential, but everyone and everyone knows he's got it, but it's during combat. It's very weird. Fade should just just get Swordmaster here, right? Just Swordmaster with the da Oh, he's considering using his Signet Ring to put another spy down to put Cobra Operations somewhere else. That's what he's looking at here. Maybe to, like, the Fremen? He could Cobra Operation Frem Kit? I think that's what he's going to do here. Looks like that's what he's going to do. No! He's going to go more higher base and he's going to spy up the council instead. He's going to do it the other, other way around. That's the thing with uprisings. There are different ways to approach these sort of things. Um, you know, people do see him differently. And he's to obviously do his ring here. So the whole reason he did this, right, was to spy up the council. This is why he did this, right? Maybe not. Maybe not. A curious game, this. Gurney gave up Swordmaster willingly 
So she didn't. He was. He would find Captain Mentat sooner. Now Fade has given up Swordmaster for reasons I don't quite know. <laughs> Not really sure why you don't just go Swordmaster there. Has he forgotten the fact that it's six cost now, not eight? He can't get there? There are that does happen from time to time. You know, people used to just being eight all the time and now it comes down to six. Like yeah, I've I've done that. I've done it the other way around where like I've got six I'll get Swordmaster. Oh no one's got it, it's eight. It is a bit tricky. Well Mardiv doesn't have to go deep desert. And, ah, I see what's going on here. So Muad'Dib figures that he wants to win the conflict, but he doesn't want to worm it. There's no point in worming it, so he's just going to research station instead and try and take it down this way, draw a load of cards. Spice must flow, I guess. He's got nine. He's got ten, actually. So he does have spice must flow in hand. Where's his... He's got no spies, but spy mask can just go to do it a fault. Mardib's going to be putting all these troops in. Mm, I think I'd just be putting the free in here. Like this, These rewards are so good in combat. I think he's just getting them in. But again, he's really scared of Highliner. Gurney could have it. Irulan could have it. The only person this battle pairs for is Fade. And it's, it's, it's he's never winning this fight. Surely. I think everyone's kind of getting into a bit of an awkward spot in this round. Gurney's got Mentat. Should be using it here. Gurney Havoc is yet to get a friendship point in this game. I think you just use Benny Operative a lot of the time, but obviously, given the fact that the Swordmaster was given away, I mean, yeah, you just do this. Now, normally people would discard their, their dagger, but Gurney Halleck has other ideas. Gurney Halleck has other ideas here. He finds his Diplo. Oh. oh, that's juicy. That's a nice one. Now I'll get him to shipping if slash whenever he wants it. It's close to a free bump, that. So Irulan, I, I don't know if she's intending to highline this. Does Irulan just go deliver supplies with space time folding instead? Like the problem is highlighting feels good, but it's not the best conflict for you. But she figures she's going to. She's gonna fire it in here. Keeps the dagger. It's all going in here. Wow. This is a huge commitment from from uh, from Yellow here. A conflict that doesn't pair for them, but it's still good rewards. It still gives her her bump and the point, water and the troop back. Like, is the thing Prince teaches us an incredible uh, combat. So even though it doesn't pair for her, they feel like there's a, there's enough value to go in like this. It's kind of wild. Back to Fade, who I'm not sure what they're gonna do here. Like, deliver supplies feels good. Um, you know, it's water. It's making progress towards a point. Obviously, it is keen to get hold of the contrast. Now, it should be noted with, with, with Covert Operation, it's spy access. You don't have to pull the spy to get the effect, though. It's not like a public spectacle or spy master. We have to pull the spy. Like, the discard happens regardless you got two spies down, so I don't see any real reason. Unless you're going to use Dune to go accept contract and then reveal Covert Operation to just put more spies down. Which I guess you could do. Would that be better than sending Covert to accept contracts? Probably, if you're going to go there. But I assume you're just going to go deliver supplies and just make faction access. But, you know, again, contract's been noted, so it's going to do this. So you might as well pull the, con the spy now because you can put two down. Pause the contract card again in Diplo. Oh. And they need to actually take their contract. That's the whole point. They went there. Fate's having a couple of awkward draws here. Feels like ever since the 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 frame of opportunity went by, it's just drawing all kind of weirdly here. And this is really hurting Fade's uh Fade's chances a little bit. 
Well, Leaves just going to pick up some spies. It does have to part from Arrakis. But it makes no sense to get involved here. So he's going to put in the second troop. Just going to allow Fade to retreat here. I can't see Gurney getting involved. Surely he's just off to espionage here, you would imagine. Could go secrets, I guess. But I feel like espionage and putting a couple of spies down looks pretty good. Put them on the other faction spots. Can't. Doesn't feel bad. Yeah, unless there's a faction spot you want to get to particularly first, like uh, Frame Kit, you want to get there now. He does decide that. Pulls the second dagger. He's kind of trying to talk himself into, like, he's like, annoyed he's pulled the dagger, but I guess he knew it was his other card, so. We should know it was his other card. That's Irulan. Is Irulan ever just ringing and trashing Tread here for the spice? It's not hoping you get the spice with flows, though. I think Irulan's got to really make start making a move towards the spot. So it's round five. Yet to buy any. I feel like shipping can't be a bad move. Maybe shipping, even shipping Imperial Privilege? Get rid of weirding? Assuming no one else puts any more combat in? Shipping High Council? Mm, spice Refinery instead. Now, she can trash a card out of her hand or pick up a one cost off the row. Just get rid of the dagger here. If you would have preferred going shipping to get that faction bump, your, you know, your bumps aren't great right now. I think I would have personally preferred that, but... Assuming you're going high council, which feels pretty decent here. So, Fade gets two more spice. Gets his two spies that he can put wherever he wants. He's got to decide where he wants these. Um, I feel like Emperor feels pretty logical. It's a bump you want to try and get hold of at some point. Could also put it on Council, maybe, to go high Council yourself. You're pretty decent resources. But Fremen's also fine. And decides to go putting it next to Research Station. Okay. There's an intent of, uh, there's some intent there. Well, Adib's just going to take his bump, get the other High Council contract. Seems good to me. Gurney gets to the Bene Gesserit anyway. Just goes Secrets. Pick, puts it in the other spy spot. So he's running up for, um, he's running up for Siege with the Rebel Supplier here. Reinforcements found. It's pretty good. High Council is for Irulan. Doesn't get the ability off Tread, though. It's the thing. Getting the ability off Tread is kind of awkward, I find. Uh, Wadib will just take overthrow his 8 Persuasion. So he gets an Intrigue as well. Picks up Cunning, which is... All right. But yeah, overthrow, obviously, very, very powerful card. But it's got to find uses out of that. Is there an obvious alliance he can go for here? Maybe? We'll see. Go anywhere with nothing. Irulan, I don't expect, will take anything. My Jared of Prepare does actually. Needs to start making spots of flow progress. And that's gonna do it here. And they're and wow, um Fade and Mardi are actually tied here, so they only get two spice each. They do not get the troop back. And Irulan will take the conflict down here, so pricey. But felt that the price was good enough to get the bump. And we're gonna move on here. Did she ever pick up Beast Boils? She did, didn't she? She did. That's partly why she went for it. So Beast Wars is fully upgraded. It's a city access for a trash, a troop, and a spice. Just doing a lot. But there's spies everywhere around the city, so it's kind of hot property here. Round six is Imperial Basin. It's our first ward conflict of the game. I think Wardeeb. He's just going to uh, 
<laughs> Irulan's getting a little bit carried away here, I think. <laughs> it's definitely, it's definitely not their turn. <laughs> but, oh, I got Bobby Fetzko. Let's use it. Does Mar D just go Siege and just blow the wall here? It's a it's a mouse conflict. Doesn't pair for him. Does he blow the wall? No one else has got hooks. Gurney's on his way to get him. Yep, does blow him. So, taking it out here. He's going to put the troop in as well. No Depart from Arrakis yet, though. So he's hoping he gets his way to Hagger Basin, which I think he gets to a lot, actually. I don't really see people blocking him this time around. And he might as well use Depart, because I guess he figures he gets the Spice back. Let's see what happens. Gurney's got Watermaster. So... He did not pull Rebel Supply. He's got Capture Mentor again. Captured Mentat to like shipping looks really juicy, by the way. It also in, it gives him the money for reinforcements if he's interested in that. Obviously, maybe not now, but later on. But with City Access going at a premium, I think you're just going to use Water Master now, right? I would. I would strongly, strongly consider next round using Imperium Politics to get my spacing bump send um, and sending Captured Mint out there. Looks like absolutely gobs of value. Absolutely gobs of it. I feel like if you're going to use Watermaster, you need to use it now. These sp these city spots are apparently really hot property. You know Irulan's got beast spores as well, so she wants to hit a city. And you don't have Research Station. I know you've got the Spy, but if you're out of key now, you don't have to use it. And if you happen to pull Rebel Supply, then you can always go back to Siege later. So I think I think for me it's... I think for me, you just you just get involved here. Go Arakeen and... No, he does pull Siege now. Okay. Decides to go the other way about it. Just taking the two water. Giving himself some research station options, perhaps. I guess this is fine. So Irulan's going to spectacle first. Because she can get her spy back there, basically, is the idea. And that's exactly what she will do. But she might not get him FB spores now. That's the only risk with this. And she does want to use it for sure. Fade's got buckets of spice here. He doesn't really have anywhere to put it. He's got Benny Operative himself. If he's going to use it, he needs to use it now. He's got three spies down though, so it is worth three persuasion instead of the two. He's currently got nine persuasion in hand. Maybe like just recon to Arakeen. He's still trying to get these troops in so he can retrieve them in a way so he can get hold of this fourth contract. I honestly don't hate going Arakeen here. And redrawing. And depending on what you draw, maybe even just reveal for the Spice Plus Flow Point. I don't know. It's going to be very hard for him to get espionage in a lot of this game. So, Sardaukar contracts on the row, which is also a really good one for him, given the fact he doesn't have the agent. And he's got plenty of spies and he needs to get towards that emperor point some point uh, i mean if you're going to arrow keen you should use recon if he's pulling that out i assume he's doing something else but re arrow keen feels fine all all reset station that's the other alternative this way you're trying to guarantee the spices flow which he does it's also a paired conflict for him actually yeah this this is much better i would be putting everything in here pauses diplo He's used one spy, though. If he uses another spy, he will not be able to reveal Benny Operative for the free persuasion. Only be worth one, but yeah, just gets it in. Yeah, this this is, makes more sense now, King. Wadi finally gets his worm in with leadership. Oh, <laughs> wow. Oh, that's pretty sick. That's pretty sick. He's drawn it with his Diplo, though, so maybe he's not that happy about it. That's pretty wild. Back to Gurney. Again, I, that's just the move for me. Imperium politics. Get shipping. Um, 
you know, just score a couple of points here. You want to gear yourself up for next round so you can just highline. He might be a little bit scared of drawing his his uh, his access, I guess, but I just feel like you just got to start getting bumps here. You're only at three points here. Next round, you're going to be committed to fighting. You don't have time to be messing about with factions. Um, next round, you're going to be too busy committing to fighting. Just goes, just goes to refinery and limps it in. Hmm. I feel like if you can do that, you must at least play reinforcements, see what you draw. Uh, I don't know. Not the biggest fan. My only assumption is he's looking to go high council here, but. It's the only thing I can think he's doing this so he can go high council of captured Mentat. That's the only thing that I can assume he's doing. But he's not guaranteed to get there. Fade's sitting there with six cash. Now, depending on the hand he's drawn, he might have to go high council to get his spice of flow. So, could go, could go wrong, man. Irulan surely just has to play Arakeen here. We have sports. What she's played for here. So it's you get one boat. It's a troop, a spice, and a trash. She has to trash out a hand. She does not get the spice for the ring. So recon goes. Basically, is a straight upgrade. It's awkward. She kind of wants to win this somehow, but it's really hard to here. We don't really know what's about to happen. I think seeing how this can't be bad. Getting involved also can't be bad. He's going to put Fade to a decision here. It feels a bit hollow, but... Fate gets his Swordmaster. Overthrow takes Secrets. It's a point from RD. Picks up Leverage, which is not really what he wants to see right now. Well, if Gurney wanted to go high council, it's there. I assume that's what he's doing. No. No. Gurney Halleck is completely committing himself to the next round conflict. He's committing himself to Deep Desert Highliner. Pulls his ring, which is not ideal. Pulls Tactical Option, which will help him a bit here. Gurney Hallock is committing himself to Deep Desert or Hager Basin, but probably Deep Desert Highliner next round and winning the conflict. And hoping it's like a spice conflict or something so he can get some uh, respins. Or the money or something. He's, he's hoping it'll be not Arakeen, basically. Propaganda would also be pretty good for him. Propaganda actually would be very decent for him. But he's putting himself for behind for the tier 3 fight, basically. Irulan's just going to go Assembly Hall. Take the Intrigue. Gets a redraw. Secures the Spice Must Flow. So no danger there. So she's going to get the bump in cash off of the Acquire card. It's one Spice Must Flow, but she needs two. Is Fade Ralph going to blast it at Highliner? I think he is. He feels like he has to win this. He can't use the Spy, of course, so he can get the Spice Must Flow from the Benny Operative. How much does he put in here? I think he might just fire it, like pretty much all of it in here. There's a lot of intrigues out there. It's very scary. I think 14 strength here is like the absolute minimum. I wouldn't even hate him putting in more. Like, you you have to win this fight. If you're going to do this, you, have, you, you absolutely must win it. So he's going to overcommit a little. So Mwadib with 7. 
Gets an intrigue for his worm. Picks up detonation. Hmm. Some interesting synergy with Depart from Arrakis. If he wants to put more troops in. I don't think he needs to, though. I wouldn't bother. But he needs to use an intrigue, though. Otherwise, he's at risk of secret stealing. Maybe you just use cunning right now and trash out like your recon and redraw. What's going on here? Can't use leverage. He hasn't gained any spice. If you can use an entry, you use cunning. And with Cunning, there is a chance you actually pull Spice with Flow here. It's 7 Persuasion, right? So even if you look just too convincing, it's 1 out of 5 you get Spice with Flow here. I think Cunning's the move. I think you should pull. Try and hit the Spice with Flow. I feel like it's 7. You might as well go for it. Sometimes you get a point. You probably pay the Spice to trash the Recon as well. He's not going to. <laughs> he takes it and pulls off longer than fighters as a card he absolutely would have wanted. So Mardim's going to risk himself losing an intrigue here. And this Penny Alliance is open for fighting. He might he might get stolen from here. Going with three. Don't think he's going to get much of anything. He might go ecological once in a blue moon. Outside of that, I don't think he's going to bother here. Irulan has Spice Must Flow, as does Fade, so they're both going to secure a point here. You'd imagine Irulan gets most of the time. Fade probably has it. He didn't pull the Spy, so he's either got it or he's nowhere near. Just takes the Prepare. So point for Irulan. Point for Fade, who's also going to take the Conflict down. Iran also gets the point, of course, for the Acquire bonus. Um, so that gets them closer to that alliance there, which is, I feel like they're going to need to secure the space-time folding, you'd imagine. And fade with nine, courtesy of the two spies. So it gets him, it's going to get him a couple of points here. Iran nose in front going into this final round I don't I don't really know who's favourite here honestly it kind of depends if this game goes 7 or 8 rounds I feel it feels like it's got 8 rounds written all over it but I don't know Rizguin's going to finally be played that's why he was happy to commit more so he can he's going to retreat 1 so that he can take um, a contract. I assume he has to go solid card contract here. Huh. Huh. How is Fader Alpha going to complete a Harvest for a contract? Am I missing something here? I don't know. We'll move on. So, next conflict is Basin. It's a Basin respin. It, it is there. It, uh, occasionally it glitches. But, you know, having just fought for it, we know that he does have it, so... So, we know it's there. But I've noticed that occasionally that part it does like glitch that it kind of like goes under the table. It's a bit weird. Some people can see it, some people can't. I've seen that before. Yeah, it's like here. There we go. It's a it's a loading thing. I've seen that happen a couple of times. Anyways, <coughs> fade. Gurney Halleck has not drawn Highliner access. He's missed it. He has missed it. So it's going to be Hagger Basin Worm. It's going to be reinforcements. 
or mercenaries. Surely he's just to play it now. No, he's going to hold on to it for later on. I guess there's no need to play it right now, I guess. Irulan needs to end this game. Urgently. The problem is, I don't think she can score four points. Does Irulan ever go deep desert? With the idea being that it blocks your position, there's six spies to take, and what else are you doing with the water? Or surely she just saves it for... Or did she just save it for research station? No, she does go for the block. That means Irulan is playing for eight rounds. She doesn't think she can end it right now. I actually don't hate Irulan just taking a card like Weirding Woman to hand. Makes it easier to buy a spice for slow here. Or maybe you take Unswerving for the troop garrison for next round. I think you should take a card in here. It's going to make getting Spice to slow a lot easier. You can't trash out your hand here, surely. That seems wild. I think you've got to take a card in hand. Unswerving's the one I would take here for the troop garrison. Do you, is the sword going to help you here? I don't think so. I think I would have taken Unswerving. That's just me. Any event. So Fade is up. Fade has Highliner access with Covert, and I think he's going to play it. He has to play the card first. Just stays out of it and just goes for Covert. Doesn't pull the Spy, of course, because he's trying to protect his, um, his Benny Operative reveal here. Everyone now has to discard a card. It is done in turn order. It's in turn order, so... Officially, it is, it is done from the player on the left, and it goes around. So, Mardeep has to discard first. He's got a really awkward hand here. But his Wormax has been blocked. Wow, he's got a really difficult hand here, does, um, does Mardeep, actually. I think he's going to keep the access, and he does. Yeah, I, I can get that. I think he just needs to have options here. Marjorie was drawn very awkwardly. I think Muad'Dib might legitimately go accept contract Imperial Privilege to Imperial Spymaster to Sardaukar. I legit think he might do that. He'll play Cunning first to trash and draw a card. But I think he goes Sardaukar also because he's got detonation, which means those four troops he recruits, he can always put them in. It's a pair of comfort for him as well. Mardi feels like he kind of has to try and win this. Between Detonation at Sadu Kar and Department of Arrakis. He might be able to do stuff. He may, I guess he's going to do that. He can't use the card. He finds Diplo, which is huge. If he wants to trash, it's too late. But I think that's what I'd be doing as my DP. here. I think I would honestly do that, except contract with Dune and go side of car with uh and go side of car, yeah. I, I think that's the move. That agent recall is gonna help you. You've got detonation as a backup always there. Might just go side of car immediately, maybe. But I think that agent recall is worth having a pump for. Unless he's got something else he really wants to do. Goes for espionage. Pulls space and kills favor, which means he can now pay the spice for the bump. <laughs> hmm. Where's he spying now, though? Now, I'm, I'm really unsure what Grizzle's plan's going to be here. It's a bit kind of... I assume he just blocks up the Emperor spot so he can just send Spy Master there. And record it for this entry. That's what he's thinking. I guess this is also another way. This is the thing with Uprising. There's, some, there's different ways to approach stuff. So here comes Rebel Supply to Arakeen. So he's going to draw a couple of cards. Mercenaries comes in. So it's two more troops. He also gets the Intrigue. Fires him before even looking. Which isn't shouldn't be a surprise. 
And Gurney Halleck is going to try and win back-to-back -back conflicts here and hope he gets the high line next round. He's drawn his Diplo now, though, which is awkward. Oh. Gurney Halleck might win back-to-back -back compacts here. It is legitimately possible now. What on earth does Irulan do here? I mean, irulan has got privilege access, but she can't really justify taking the agent of Deep Desert. Mardib sitting over all the water. Again, like shipping privilege looks good. It would allow her to actually use tread as well, but she wants spiceless flows. But she's stuck at eight. I think you have to assume this game is going two rounds. And you've got to try and get your faction point now with the Spacing Guild and put yourself in a position to get Spice of Flow next round. But then you've got the Spice for Highliner. It's it's very awkward here. If you can get a bump with the Bene Gesserit, it's plus two swords as well for later on. It's very complicated, this. You can't imagine you're going to win this fight, though. Gurney Halleck is lined up to take four points. I don't think anyone could do much about it. Does decide to go the shipping route. I feel like this is reasonable. Oh, takes it with the Bene Gesserit, so it's going to be aggressive here. It's going to um, it's going to put Red to task. Fade Rafa has his contract card in hand. I can only think the reason that Fade Ralpha took the Harvest contract is because he gets Imperial Basin, and he thinks next round he can cash that in. Fade Ralpha is off to secret, so he's giving up on Spice Must Flow here, by the looks of it. Oh! <laughs> can you believe it? He finds Siege Ritual. But what do you use it on? Does he, does he go for the Bene Gesserit Alliance? I don't think he can. But I think he's going to. I think he feels it's a free shot. Crazy old game this, isn't it? I do feel like things have gone a little bit awry for Fade here, and I think it's not been entirely of his own making. He's had a couple of weird draws. Contingency is now found. There's the other one. But he's gonna go for it. He's taking a chance here with the Bene Gesserit. He feels he's he feels he's gotta he's gotta try and get this alliance if he's gonna win the game, because he's no near Emperor and he can get Fremen later. Crazy old match, this. Mardi surely has set himself up just to go Emperor here. Is Mardi going to go Basin, Sadukar? He probably recognizes that Fade wants to get to Imperial Basin next round, so if he goes Basin, it cuts off that, and it's going to cost Fade a point. It'd be really hard for him to get these contracts done. It's hard enough as it is. It's also Spice for um, Space and Guild favor. Yeah, he decides that's what he's going to do. These troops will go in as well because it's it's there's too much to fight for. I don't know if he'll use the part from Arrakis. At least he gets leverage off, so he gets a coin. And he's going to use this to get hold of the side of car contract. So he's going to go there with Imperial Spy Master to get his agent recall. And he's going to play it out from there. What does Gurney want to do here? He can't highline. Waste the contract. He can't get Bene Gesserit. If he wanted to go shipping, well, he, he passed that up earlier. Um, 
do you just go like Framkit and try and put a bit of pseudo pressure on the Throne Alliance? You got nothing to really, you got nothing to lose, or do you just take um, an Emperor bump to get you close to try and score both points of politics? Benny Operative is doing nothing for you. That's the way it is. The daggers you got to keep. I feel like Fremkit can't be a tech, can't be bad. I mean, what's your next? The problem is he's got one card left to draw. The question is, 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 is what is it? I don't know. Sitting here, I couldn't tell you. I feel like, I feel like, I don't think he can never go Highliner. He, he has to save his spice. So he either goes Dutiful, just as kind of a, a nothing sort of move, or he goes Fremkit. Fremkit feels slightly better. Unless it's a card he absolutely does not want to draw. I don't think he really has any of those. He... Whoa! Gurney Halleck! Sadu cars! He pulls it in Spiral Wars so he can draw a card into his hand. It's up to a free cost, but... Wow! That's just a point! He just that's just a point. Wow, okay. Didn't expect that. Irulan does go privilege. I guess she'll get rid of contingency. Wow. I I did not expect that. She'll repull the shipping agent, I guess. She can't give up Deep Desert. She has to give this one up. She has the opportunity to respin an intrigue if she wants. It's not mandatory though, so I can't tell her to do it if she if she decides not to. She's gonna keep the swords. Is Irulan gearing up for Highline next round? I guess so. But she she's gonna script that out. I think that's the right call. That's nice. Opportunism. Well, I tell you what, that's actually pretty significant here because she's got a, an extra bump the Bene Gesserit she doesn't need. She might be able to magic one else out, and she's got the money for it. That could well be a point. Fade now doesn't have to spend his spy at uh, shipping, if that was what he was going to do. Fade Draft is absolutely desperate to get these contracts off. The problem is, I don't think there's a lot he can do about it. Doesn't even have a siege access to get a water here. I don't think Faye's going to get these contracts done. I just don't see it. The problem is, if he uses his ring, he's going to get to the last uh, spot, which is the troop and spy. So he must have spend the spy at wherever he goes, like if he goes shipping. I think he should go shipping just to secure the Fremen bump and be done with it. Like, point to point, right? You're going to get two spice back from priority contracts, so you're not even really paying much. It's not how you intended this game to go, but I... I think at this point, you just got to start scoring points. Fade is going to use this. He is determined. He is absolutely determined, this man to get these contracts off. Well, fair enough. He's got a couple of points running on it, but it's just... It's so hard. Unless he gets free water and he gets himself to Deep Desert, I don't see how he ever cashes this in. He takes a spacing bump. Oh, my God. Contract to be taken. They're both the same. Wow. Fade Ralph is putting pressure on this alliance. It's all happening here. That might make Irulan go Highline here. She wasn't planning on it. I don't think. But she might be forced into Highlining right now just to get the, the alliance secured. I don't know. I guess if Fade had a way to take the alliance, he would have already done it. So maybe not. 
Sorry, guys. It's like one in the morning here. This game's gone on pretty long. It's gone very, very funky, this. Mardiv did not expect the Sadu car move from Gurney Halleck, and I didn't expect it. Problem is, if he's Sadu cars, then he also has to get the spice back so that he can, uh, if he's going to reveal uh, Spacing Guild favor, he's got the spice for it. And I don't see how he would ever do that. But where's Spacing Guild favor going? The only place he could ever go is except contract. <laughs> Unless he's highlining. <laughs> what a ridiculous crown this has been. <laughs> he's highlining for a combat he can't possibly win. He's now does the spice for the part of Rackers. What is happening this match? There is no way. He's gonna just. <laughs> he's just highlights and just garrots, isn't it? Because of detonation. This is so weird. Anyways, Gurney gets his water. Because he's now throwing Bonded Breville Supplier. I think he's gonna be able to use Spice's power here as well. He's not gonna be able to get hold of the second Spice, though. Here on just in assembly halls. Trying to pull Spice must flow. Hits it. So, Segura Spice Trade is now on. Mitchell is becoming fair. Oh my god. Princess Irulan's just pulled by Axis. And she can get the money back from the Spacing Guild. Oh, she can only score three points. What she's looking at doing is basically she bumps Spacing Guild, bumps the Bene Gesserit, gets an Intrigue back. Spacing Guild gives her the cash back, so she's got opportunism. And she can always opportunism away from the Bene Gesserit sort of thing. That's what she's looking at doing here. And Public Spectacle's on its way. So she could even maybe, like, totally secure the Bene Gesserit Alliance. And then when she reveals opportunism, uh, the Bene Alliance, and hope that she holds on to the Alliance. That's what she's looking at here. Buy access on this pool is absolutely crazy. It reminds me a little bit of... Um, it reminds me a bit of my time at the North Carolina Invitational where I, I went up there like end of round eight and I pulled buy access and it basically won the middle game. To pull it at this point is absolutely insane. I feel like you've got to use it now, right? Get your nose in front. And I think you should pressure the Bene Gesserit Alliance as well. You get the entry back for it minimum, right? She might also be considering, well, she could just go for the Emperor Alliance and just... Um, and just, like, secure that alliance. I guess that might be more efficient. <coughs> it might be more yeah, efficient. Sorry, still thinking. It might be more efficient to go spacing bump. An Emperor bump with buy access. Next round, public spectacle. Assuming she draws it, which is guaranteed. Hit that to Espionage. Use that to match up with Fader Alpha. And then probably just bump the Sp the Emperor again and take that alliance. And then opportunities in the Bene Gesserit. The problem is, I don't think she can score four points this round. I think the most she can score is Spice Plus Flow, Opportunism, and one buy access point, which gets her to nine. So I don't see any way to close the game out now. I totally understand Mitchell here spending a moment and thinking about this. And Ryder, he's part of the freeway tie at the top of the table. This is a big spot here for, for this group. This is a big moment. So here we go. By access is played. Do they go Benny Bump? They do go Benny Bump for the re-intrigue. Turns report is found. It's a card draw. She's already got the Spice Must Flow, though. She doesn't have to play it. I don't think you have to be concerned about... You can't be secret stolen here, so you could just reveal. But that by access might just put Irulan over the line here next round. 
But we are going next round, that is for sure. I don't this game is not ending here. Fade with nothing to do. Wadi with seven and a couple of daggers. Do you just take Strike Fleet? Yeah. Spy down. Can't be bad. Strike Fleet, Hagger Basin, Strike Fleet, Deep Desert? What are you doing with the water? I assume you just put the spawn deep desert for the double worm. Yeah, makes sense. Arsenal is on its way here. I don't think he can draw strike fleet is the only thing. Six cards, so he's very unlikely to find it. So Irulan gets the spice was flow. So secure spice trade is now active. So she's got a point there. Irulan is favorite here. Irulan is favorite. She's got basically two points in hand here. Gurney doesn't even bother using Spice's power. He's going to not even bother retreating. He'd rather hold on to it to... I would have been tempted. But I guess how do you get the highliner? So Gurney Hallett gives up the point earlier for the Spice accumulation. Wait a minute, Gurney. Gurney Halleck declines to spend the spice for the victory point because he's got spice's power and he's going to commit himself to winning this fight as well. And the players are like, what is going on here? I mean, I'll be honest, it's the first time I've ever seen someone decide not to take the point from Imperial Basin. But he is clearly declined to take it. This is a first. What do you want me to say? What what possible analysis could you give me? Other than the fact he's got Spice's power and he's going to try and win this fight as well. That's all I've got for you guys. The wild west of Dune Imperium Uprising. You are very welcome. Irulan has spectacle. She's looking at highlining here. It is propaganda. Everyone's got matches apart from Fade. Irulan is going to go for Highline. She feels she might as well. Has to play an Intrigue here. I think Yellow's saying, wait, hold on a second, can I play the Intrigue? Oh my gosh. That's psychotic. Fade Raffa does not have any access. But he does have shipping access. There we go. They're going to allow her to play the Intrigue. She gets one draw. I hope he's saying to them, don't do that again. Got to make sure once you press the end turn button, like, Destiny's out of your hands. So, surely Fade Raffa just has to go shipping. And take the Benny bump. It feels horrible though, because the fact you know she's got spectacle, but she doesn't have spice. But then you can't get back to the alliance. Unless you draw access. There's no way Fade Ralph is getting in these harvest contracts. It's just not happening. It's just not happening. I mean, at this point, if Fades... Fades, that's what I'm trying to do. I think he's just got to abandon it at this point and say it's not going to happen. Horrible spot here for Fader Alpha. Pretty, pretty horrid. I mean, shipping, pull the spy, draw a card... I feel like you're kind of meant to take the Benny bump, right? 
but you can't really defend the alliance. The problem, do you just set, give it up and just take the the Fremen point? You're kind of just giving your alarm the game if you do realistically, and I think you probably know that. But if you don't think you can hold it, maybe you just play for second place here. You know, if 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 you don't think it's realistically holdable, maybe you just give it up and just secure the point that you can get. I wouldn't hate it if he just went shipping and took the front and bump. Like I would get it. When you know Iran's sitting there, or should know Iran's well, Iran probably sitting at a public spectacle. She can just double bump it if she wants. You know, I it sucks. It really sucks. He might go research station first, thinking he's got the spy. He feels he's got to get a spice of slow hits. What he does. Pauses Diplo. Helps. I think you might as well just get troops in here. Like, this is almost certainly last round, right? I don't see how this game goes nine rounds. You'd think Erlan's going to score at least one point, probably two here. Wadib's going to warm up first, of course. Gets to draw a couple of cards, cut us if there's two worms. Obviously, Wadib's just going all in here. He's got points to accrue. The problem is, he's got... He needs to use Overthrow to get... like. Oh, my God, he pulled Strike Fleet. Oh. <laughs> and he's got Detonation. He can send that to the Emperor. Has Wadib ever got any plans to try and steal the Bene Gesserit Alliance from Iran? But Iran could just seal it if she wants to. I mean, she, he doesn't know that iran has got opportunism. He has no idea about that. But I guess if anyone on the table is a good candidate for having opportunism, it probably it probably is Iran, if anyone here. Gurney's got his public spectacle, but he's got no spies. I suspect he's just going to go, like, espionage and or secrets to put the spy down to spectacle it. But he's trying to... He's playing to, like, try and... He is playing to try and, like, get to Highland. Oh, man. Here's a crazy spot. Do you ever, like... Hold on, hope that next round Fade Ralpha goes Highliner so that you can actually then play your Benny Operative to put the Spy on the Spacing Guild and Highline yourself and like really try and long game it. You'd need Spice though and you don't have it. Like I'm trying to give ideas and strategies for these spots here but they're just so bizarre. <laughs> I don't think he is going to be able to persuade himself to hold on here. He also doesn't need... Like, he's got a point in hand with Imperium politics. So he just needs to put a spy down, hit it with public spectacle after going to espionage, and he scores all three points. That gets him to eight points. It can't be bad. Espionage is not a bad move. Espionage can never be a bad move here. But he's like, he's gearing himself to try to win this as Spice's power. How does he get these troops in? How does he get enough strength? Is he going to matter? There's Highliners. There's Worms coming in. He, of course, could go Espionage and a Worm Up Deep Desert to hit it himself. With Public Spectacle. That actually looks really strong. Espionage. Ooh, that actually looks really juicy. Espionage and putting one of the spies from Deep Desert to, to hit there yourself with your worm with your ring. That looks very strong. Quite like that. It's still And you'd still have enough spice for Spice's power as well. So you'd be looking... Two worms is six. Three troops is 12. Spice's power is 18. Tactical option is 20. That's before you put in anything else... 
you'd still have another visit to like a city or maybe desert no desert is going to be able to get to but they have frem kit maybe even siege occasionally you get there still like you know or you could just pull rebel supplier or you could just pull rebel supplier that's pretty good here comes spectacle Assumably, Irulan's just going to seal the alliance here. Oh, she's got no spice! She spent it all at the... She spent it all at Highliner! <laughs> she has to go secrets! What's she done? I mean, she can just use Beast Spoils to get the spice and hit it that way. I guess if you can do that, you might as well just use your signet ring and just like trash the spice of slow or something. Or do you just hit secrets and cement it now? Yeah, your alarms. I mean, this has been a very complicated last round on a bit. It's just going to hit secrets and call it a day. I assume she's just going to cement the alliance here. I can't see her doing anything else at this point. Yeah, has to do it, you'd think. And then she's going to probably try and reveal and take the bump each way. She hasn't got any more faction access, so she can't... It makes no sense for her to try and go with the Emperor Alliance at this point. And she's going to probably opportunize her, like one bump from each and assume she's okay. She's nowhere near Spice was Flow. Fade, I guess, is just going to... I don't know what Fade's going to do here. It's all very sad for Phaedra Alpha how this game kind of has gone down. I do think the initial plan was pretty solid. It's kind of drawn out a bit awkwardly though. Some of it's been unlucky. Some of it perhaps has been a touch of his own making. You know, pulling show and profits and getting, getting the contracts uh, feels really good. But yeah, espionage is just, you know, when he got that initial spy, he should have just Got it on Bene Gesserit ASAP and never did. And has been just blocked out of it continuously. Not been his day. They've just got to try and score whatever points they can now. They know they've got a point coming from the Fremen. What's the only other option they've got here? That makes What's the best thing they can do to score? Just going to ship. They pull the Benny Operative, which is an absolute huge card for them, actually. Three, four, five, six, seven. Now they could just go High Council and get the Spice Must Flow. And I think that's what they're going to do here. Yep. Looks like that's going to be the plan here. Let's take the Fremen Bump now. And it opens up High Council with the Dagger. And there will be enough for Spice Must Flow. And they can at least score that point. Finish on seven and a load of resources. And see how that kind of gets them. Back to Muad'Dib, who I think should just be overthrowing... It's kind of true. He wants to overthrow the Emperor. He doesn't have to overthrow the Emperor. He wants to hit the Emperor so that he can take... The problem is he's got... It's, um, what's he actually doing with these propaganda bumps is the problem for him. It's two pairs. He can't get the Spacing Alliance. He can't get the Benny Alliance. He's already got the Fremen Alliance. So if he wants to get the Emperor Alliance, he needs to get there at some point. Or you reveal Space and Guild's favor and pay for the bump yourself. But I think he's just going to go and hit the Emperor himself and do it this way. He's going to go with Sardo Card because of Detonation, which is what he does. He <laughs> he finds the Ornithop to Conflict uh, card, which actually, well, he was fighting for that anyways. Wow. Wildeep has actually absolutely jammed his garrison. Is completely full. I don't think I've ever seen that in Uprising. He gets the he gets the agent recall, of course. Ooh, do you want to do that? Oh, he's got to. It's mandatory. 
And now Gurney Hell looks like, oh, I can actually go deep desert now. But it looks so weird. When Wadi makes that move, you've got to assume he's got at least one detonation. I don't see how you could ever expect you're going to win this fight. But you've got Spice's power. Gurney Hallett might talk himself into it. But I don't think he should. I think he should just stick to Hagger Basin Highline. Uh, Hagger Basin Research Station with Supplier. And this. It is tempting. Like, do not get me wrong. It is tempting. But I think... The problem is, is that Deep Desert, you're actually getting less firepower than going to a Research Station anyway. So... It's a bit of a trap. Yep. It's going to stick to the line here. This is the better move. Ooh, excuse me? Gurney Halleck is threatening the Fremen Alliance with a propaganda win. He thinks he can win it. He thinks he can win this fight. He's going to go for it. This is absolutely crazy. Irulan goes to Arakeen. She's going to pull, I assume, Unswerving into her hand to get the Spiceless Flow. Is that enough? Two, three, four, five, seven? No, but it's it's troops, I guess. Just getting as much firepower as she can. I don't think she can expect to win this. Wadib's got 11 persuasion, by the way. So he's going to get a spice plus flow. I don't know who's going to win this. I think Irulan's meant to win this match, but I don't know. Back to Fade. I think you just got to go high council and just say it's the best scoring move I have. You know, this game has not worked out as you wanted to. But you've got... Seven Persuasion. Benny Operative is worth three because you got the two spies out. And I think you just high counsel and just kind of shrug your shoulders and say, it hasn't worked out. I... What else is there here? Yeah, you took the Fremen bump, so you don't have to worry about that. You've no Imperial privilege. Research Station you've already gone to. Espionage you can't get to. Assembly Hall isn't enough. Arakeen's gone. In, in Emperor Dutiful, you don't have a way of getting the other bump. I don't think there's any other move that just scores you a point. I think you just have to take the point here and, and say it is what it is. Finish on seven, five spice, load of resources, and hope that you don't come last. I don't think the odds of it are great, truthfully. I don't see anything else. It's kind of a sigh move. You don't really love it. But I don't see what else you can do here. Makes the high council move. Wadi, what's he going to do here? So he's got his ring. Again, he's got 11 persuasion. He might legitimately leave overthrow in his hand for the two swords but if he doesn't think he can win the fight he should overthrow imperial privilege now or him overthrow um dutiful now he might go imperial privilege himself with his ring thinking that he's going to be able to deploy a couple of forces here I actually don't hate that move from Wardeep. I actually quite like going Imperial Privilege here with your ring and get rid of the Fopter. I quite like that. I I'm, The more I look at it... Oh, we can actually get rid of Depart for Arrakis. Depart for Arrakis is absolutely doing completely nothing because his entire garrison is in front of him. This is the problem with going with Stripe Fleet up to Sadu Kar is that now you've rendered Depart for Arrakis like, useless. 
because your entire garrison is in your hand. And you've made this really awkward. Maybe you should have just gone dutiful service and just, you know, so you can at least depart from action and get forces in. The problem is now it's really hard to get these forces mobilized into your garrison. Like, you can go for, like, two, like, a, a refinery and Imperial Basin and detonation, but it's only 8 out of 10. That still leaves you two forces stuck in your garrison. That might not be enough. <clears throat> Gurney Hamlet is threatening Rebel Supplier to research station. And he deliberately did not take Spice last round, which means if I was sitting there and someone did that to me, I'd say, well, he must have Spice's power. Like, what else could he have? Or stockpiling. But if you've got stockpiling, just take the point. It must be Spice's power and he's trying to win the next fight. It's the only thing that makes any logical sense here. So you can estimate that Gurney's probably got, what, 15... Plus six is 21. Oh, no, it'd be plus six from Research Station. Two plus two plus two. So that's 19. Spice Fire is 25. He might. Well, he, he's going to overthrow for the point here. I think he is going privilege, though. He's just going to try and score what he can here. Here comes the supplier. I have no idea if Gurney Halleck is going to win this. Like, this is... I mean, Irulan's sitting there with five swords. Beast of Spores is eight. Widdings, nine. Swerving's a troop. She's getting plus She's getting plus 11 here. She's at like 25. Gurney's got tactical options. Those plus two swords might actually win him this fight. Irulan, Irulan is scoring with opportunism, so don't worry. It is the last round. But the problem is, is now she's at risk. If she opportunisms and goes down with the spacing guild and Mwadi wins it, she can actually steal the alliance from her. And that would be ugly. Because he would do that over taking the Emperor Alliance. Nothing she can do. She basically is hoping that either she wins or Gurney wins. Which is cooked, really. Because, of course, if Gurney wins, it also takes a point from Wadi because of the Fremen push. Crazy old match, this. So. So, Irulan gets the troop. She can deploy it because she has Fremen Bond. She's got five swords coming. Heck of a finish this, isn't it? Heck of a finish. Takes long and fights just in case this game continues, because it might at this point. Who knows? Vader Alpha is up. The problem is, I don't see how Mwadib's going to win this 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 fight. You know, the problem is going to deliver supplies means it's now harder for him to win. Like, Irulan is terrified he's got all the battle intrigues. But he's got no spies, so the biggest ones aren't of use. Fade has nine. Gets the point. He did the best he could, and then given the situation. It sucks the game didn't play it as he wanted to, but... You, you've done what you can here. Now it's just kind of out of your control. I do think he's been a little unfortunate this game. A couple of spins haven't gone his way. And the various resources. <coughs> Sorry. This game pushing two hours at this point. It's been a long one. I think Mardi might as well Imperial Privilege here. Why would you not Imperial Privilege here? Get rid of Department of Rackets. It's a completely dead intrigue. 
Maybe you find something interesting. Maybe you find some swords you weren't expecting. Maybe you find, like, questionable methods or, you know, you find, like, a way to get a spy down to Arakeen or something. Like, maybe you find op on options and now you know it's out. But, like, maybe you find something. Maybe you find Shadow Alliance. Shadow Alliance could be, is, could be well good for you. That could be a point. Maybe you find, um, I don't know what else you could find that's a town of use here. I just feel like Imperial Privilege is there, and you've got your Signet Ring. Your money, like, this is the last round, almost certainly. What harm is there to Imperial Privilege? And just see what you draw. I think you might as well. You're always going to be able to send to a deployment spot if you want. You're not in any danger there. Yeah, he can't use the part. It's completely dead. But this is no good. He won't be able to put in more troops. Apart from rackets, he's not able to recruit anymore. It's only two because he's filled his garrison. Mwadib must be assuming this game is going to go on here. Or he's just missed that he can go a privilege. Been a strange one. Anyways, Mwa Gurney Halleck is going to reveal for nine, courtesy of always smiling. He's eight in hand. Plus six strength in combat gives him the plus one. So he gets the water, gets the spice must flow. Game does this sometimes. <laughs> I don't think this is that important. Apparently it is to some. Anyways, Imperium Politics is going to give him the Emperor point, I assume. And I think he's going to take propaganda down here. There's a power as a spice. He kind of has to use detonation to truck the troops in, but he can't feel good about this. Gets the spice to flow at least. And spending the symbol. Oh my god, he, he spent his matching symbol. He spent his matching symbol. For the spice. Yeah, he's like, hold on, that doesn't make any blind bit of sense. Yeah, I was about to say, it's like, what? He's trying to work out if he's going to win the fight. If he win, if he thinks he's going to win the fight, he has to spend it. If he doesn't think he can win, he has to pass. Clearly, Red does not think they're going to win this fight. And he's got to hold on to the guaranteed point, which is, I think, the correct move. If he's got a battle intrigue in hand, he could do. Oh, no, did he take his intrigue? Hold on, hold on, hold on. Did he get his intrigue for the worm? Have to pot in there. It is mandatory. Doesn't make a difference in this case. So Irulan with plus five. Fades has nothing to do. Wadib is just going to pass. And Gurney fires in eight swords here. If they didn't realize where he kept the spice on hand, it is now. I mean, I don't know if not taking the, if the spice makes a lick of sense. Elon has to pass. Fade has to pass. Wadi's got nothing. Gurney with the plus two swords. Knows he's good. So 
So Gurney Halleck is going to take a couple of points here. He's also going to match his combat. But I think Irulan wins it on tie breaks of Spice. Because of Secure Spice Trade. And that is going to do it here. A pretty insane match. And the end... Oh my goodness, mate. And the end results is... So Irulan wins it on Spice tiebreak. Going on 11. Wadib finishes third with eight, courtesy of losing the Fremen Alliance. And unfortunately, it's for, for double D. He tried his best. It didn't really spin out this one. What a... Man, what a mammoth game. This this seemed like a game of lots of misery and pain and people not <laughs> liking life. I mean, did I... I mean, I thought I picked Fade because I was first up, right? I'm mm -hmm. oh, sorry. Yeah, it was I think first. It, and Fade so was definitely last. the correct pick out yeah. of the leaders. Yeah. You spent a lot of time, like, blocking me here, which didn't advance your own game plan. Like, there was literally a turn where this had no bonus spice and this had bonus spice, and you went here. I didn't hate that. I, I think Fade I think Fade actually had not a bad idea because he had Cho and Profit as well as the contracts. He pulled them both super early, so... Yeah. Like, he was obviously trying to and get together the resources of that. I mean, he kind of didn't respect. He had a couple of times you drew and drew awkwardly and pounded your contract. Yeah. If, and was, which didn't help if I just Yeah, if I just grabbed the right contracts, I could have gotten them done. That would have been my one point. Yeah, they would have got well, two points. Then, You'd have scored them both. But, yeah, they kind of yeah. went out a bit. And obviously, like, the espionage, you yeah. just never could get there, which you obviously desperately mm -hmm. needed. But that was never really there. But I, I got, like, the, the couple of... Blocked here. Like, Mardiv got blocked pretty heavily on hooks for a long time, so it definitely yeah. told to fair. But, I mean, this is a, this is a mammoth, mammoth match, obviously, and a heck of a lot happened. Um, uh, I can't wait to watch it with your commentary. <laughs> uh, I mean, I will say it is the first time I've seen anyone optionally decline to convert full spice in the point. I've not seen that before. Obviously, yeah. it's because you had Spice's power and you felt you had to win back-to-back yeah. -back combat, so I assume it's why you did it. Yeah, exactly. Uh, I was hoping actually this combat would come up, but I uh, got lucky on this one, but mm. it was not enough. Found the value for you it. See, like, I, I, just I don't know one. every combat. Oh, yeah, I to was... then try and... Uh, to, to... I was still... Yeah, found found some other bits and pieces if it was to be. But yeah, this is just... Yeah, a... but you used every influence you had, so I don't think it would have made a good point, right? No, he yeah, wouldn't. No, yeah, I, he wouldn't have been I, able to take it and then drop back down. No, I think I think he was pretty maxed out. I, I would have uh, stole yellow and He he would have he would have gone going for the up for uh, he would have I gone see, for yellow I instead, see. but he couldn't reach it. Yeah, I guess that makes a degree of sense. Um, which I guess this was very tricky right here. This uh, opportunism for me. Yeah, I, you, you pulling do. that and then obviously like the edge of the the buy access pull was was enormous. That was absolutely yeah. gigantic pull. There's a heck yeah. of a ton to pull it as well. You just have to. The problem is it's awkward, yeah, because obviously of opportunism, like, you have to drop down the spacing guild and you're just praying red doesn't win because then right. it torches your game and then we go another round. <laughs> so I was fine, yeah, I was like, I was fine with green winning. Yeah. Um, as long as, as long as red didn't win. Yeah, which is bizarre, really. Um, but yeah, this is, this, is a, this is a long old game. I think, you know, it's a phase of uprising, I think, sometimes is like... It, there's different routes people can and can't take. I think everyone caught into some really awkward spots early. Obviously, that one deep as well. Like, you know, you kind of feel like you got a strike fleet side with car, but then how do you get your troops in? I, I thought you were just going to go Imperial Privilege of your ring just to there. Just to yeah, I just thought about that too. I was also trying to get the spice to steal the alliance. Up there as this. well, yeah. Um, I it definitely should not have played this here. Uh, I should have saved this for the swords, but it, I don't think it would have mattered. Um, well, I don't know, but I mean, the thing is, I, I think it might have done because then, like, the garrison, then it's stuck in here. You're then able to maybe put it in there, but I, I don't know. It's awkward. Then you need the spice. I already for had the. Um, I could have played a, a different card to go here, probably. I, well, I could have played Overthrow. Or maybe um, just hit Dutiful instead. I don't know. Yeah. It's, it's, yeah, it's a bit of a weird. I think, yeah, maybe, but. I, I, it's like you said I think everyone got into kind of awkward spots here, you know, especially like like uh, decline sword master early. I assume they wanted to don't didn't want to respin, 
and Lou's captured Menta. There was some weird sword master hijinks in this game. There was a lot of strange yeah, stuff. Yeah, that was yeah, well, that was interesting because uh, Green was the only one with eight Solari, but then Yellow had yellow the, had the have Yellow the had the intrigue. Still. I, mean, I, I was had in the intrigue to grab it. Yeah, too, and it was so bizarre because because I assumed it, it, Yellow was just going to go here and put the spy up there so that they could use the intrigue <laughs> just to get there, and then and then yeah, Green didn't go there. I was like, okay, sure. <laughs> Yeah, there was a risk really move on, nice... on my side, but maybe should have no. It was a really nice game with influence because even you know, like you went down on some spots, but you still ended up with pretty high influence around the board. Yeah. And what I round did you pull uh, overthrow? Um, it was like round yeah, five. Yeah, five like or six. It was, it was yeah. mid to late game, so. Yeah. Yeah, I only saw it. Well, I saw it much. twice. Yeah. 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 But no, this was this was a yeah pretty lengthy. It was pretty pretty complicated um you know i think it's cons it was yeah it was just kind of it was it was i feel bad for, for for blue a bit i feel like you know he just kind of for half the game was looking fine and it just kind of derailed itself a little bit and it was yeah. kind of hard to get back on there's much you could do about that sometimes i literally can't figure out <laughs> what to have changed about my play like i grabbed I Benny operative yeah. have a good one <laughs> I grabbed spy access so I could constantly try for faction bumps, and I just like could not get an economy going. It, it, yeah, I mean the problem was it's like you needed desperately access to this, which you never found access to. And again, yeah, you, like a couple yeah. of times you went for a late draw, and then found your contract card, and you know, and the contracts yeah. you had, like you couldn't ever fill this, and this was optimistic, mm -hmm. you know. Yeah. Um, but it was just kind of the way it spun out a bit. So I think it was a little unfortunate. Mm -hmm. um, maybe watching okay. it back, you'll think of it to be so there's probably stuff that i said here or there which you may or may not agree with like most things no, I no. Say. I'm, <laughs> i've i've been trying a ton of practice games to try and get better for this but i feel like i don't know after another five more games <laughs> I this, think, is, this, it, is it three weeks of yeah I six mean, weeks of tournaments this is halfway? something like that yeah this was this was a very messy match for like everyone involved so <laughs> yeah. you know everyone got stuck in the weeds like this game went what excess of two hours Long one, yeah, like, but yeah, I'm, I'm just really slow, slow so like I mean, really everyone, slow. everyone, everyone yeah. slowed down. Once you hit like round six and a half, like, everyone crawled. So yeah. I feel like the Imperium row worked out for Ural in um, late game. A little bit. I mean, you know, like the Irulan, I think it was overly cool. I mean, Irulan was desperately hoping they get captured meant at the start of the game, and oh, got, I was, yeah, yeah, you were desperately looking for that, and then and then Gurney passed up leadership, like no. <laughs> That was, yeah, that, that was... I felt the pain, but never mind. Anyways, go out to the win. Um, hey, and uh, yeah, I've got I've got to sort this out. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I can't wait for you to like fast forward through some parts. And... I I don't know what I'm gonna do. I might have to do some editing. We'll see. That's a job for tomorrow. Yeah. All right. Well, once again, great to talk with you guys in person. Great to play, and appreciate the game. No worries. Yeah. Same same. So here's a look at the table then after that mammoth struggle. Uh, and Mitchell sits atop of the table with two wins out of three. Uh, it's going to feel pretty decent about their chances to finish as a top two qualifier. Far from guaranteed at this point, um, but definitely in with a solid chance here. But Grizzle, Evan, and Slurmish all sitting right behind him, uh, ready to take advantage of any mistakes that come through in his last match. Uh, Grizzle will have to settle for sitting in second place, and you know he's going to need a little bit of help maybe from Evan and Slurmish to also slip up to try and make his life a bit easier. Um, as for further down the table, Albert finds himself mid-table with six points from three. Probably feels he's going to need to get at least a second place in his last game to try and finish in the top five. And Double D is going to have to find a win from his last match, realistically, you'd think, to achieve the same. Yeah, a, a really complicated and uh, funky old game, this. Um, again, notable the Irulan. It's not the first time I've seen Irulan win in a game against Fade, Muad'Dib, and Gurney specifically, because those three tend to just go very combat heavy. Um, but yeah, a lot of strange stuff happened in this one. I'm definitely curious to see what your guys have feedback on it. You know, Alba of deciding to give up Swordmaster. Um, and again, yeah, the decision to give up the Spice in the last combat, specifically because he's got Spice's power and he feels he has to win back-to-backs in order to try and win the game. And, you know, as he said, there was worlds where maybe he could have actually found a way to steal the Alliance from Irulan and got there. Um, if he'd found Captured Mentat, he would have spun for it and gone for that one instead. And I guess, arguably, yeah, he might well have won the match, um, which would have been pretty insane. But I I've certainly never seen anyone decline 
the spice there from the point. Exceptionally unusual, and I think this is about like one of the only circumstances I can think of where I would consider declining taking the point for the for the for that. It's it's a very unusual situation. Um, but maybe in this situation it was a bit of a masterstroke. I don't know. Um, I've said with Double D, I think we're a bit unlucky. Grizzle, I think as well, was kind of just like stopped riding the waves a little bit in this one. Definitely got blocked a lot by the table, um, who did not let him get hooks, uh, did not get him worms for a good couple of rounds, blocking Hagger Base and blocking Deep Desert, keep him out of there. I don't hate Blue making that those choices. Um, but maybe could have done a touch better. But it was it was awkward though. Like again, he needed espionage access desperately and just never got there. Never could get the spy down, and it was always going to be tough going from there. And was not able to find a plan B. Uh, and the contract situation just kind of fell apart a bit on him, which was a little unfortunate. But that's the thing with contracts. Sometimes you don't know what's going to come out. You don't know what you're going to have to complete when you decide to go early. Um, you don't know what's going to come out. And if it's stuff that's difficult to achieve, then it's all going to get a bit awkward from there. So. That's the way it goes sometimes. But an interesting game nonetheless. Uh, I don't know if future Black Shadow is going to cut out a little bit of the time between the moves. I have no idea. I might just upload it entirely and say, here's two hours of Uprising. Enjoy. <laughs> we shall see. Anyways, kids, thank you much for watching. Take care of yourselves. We will see you on the next conflict. It's nearly two in the morning in here. I'm exhausted. See you later.